Okay, so we're going to talk about Bronsted Lowry acidity. And if you follow me, I think you're going to be surprised, maybe very surprised, at how much predictive power we can get from a couple structures and a couple tables and some things that we might, and that I ended up memorizing, you may end up memorizing also. Okay, so Bronsted Lowry acidity is going to give us another brick for our foundation. Um, for organic chemistry. Recall from Gen Chem, we talked about strong acids and weak, and weak acids. Remember that? And when I said strong acids, I said, oh yeah, we're going to memorize these six or these seven strong acids and everything else is weak, right? And at the time I winked at you when I said wink, wink, you know, uh, strong means that it goes to completion or it's irreversible, right? In other words, all of the acid molecules donate their proton. That's what a strong acid is, and everything else is weak, everything that's not one of those, those uh, six or seven strong acids. And some of you may have raised your hand and say, well, what about this acid, or what about that acid? And I would say, well, actually, that's dangerous, but it's not technically strong, okay? And so uh, most of you, I think, got comfortable with using the, the, uh, the concept of a strong acid, but now we're gonna go a little further. And we're going to talk about strong and weak acids, both quantitatively. Oops, whoa! Well, let me get my marker here. We're going to go quantitatively and also qualitatively, and we're going to find we're going to get a tremendous amount of information uh, in this in this way. First of all, let's think about quantitative. So. When we talk about quantitative, of course, quantitative is when we're, when we're basically making calculations, okay? In order to do that, let's go back and revisit what acidity is, all right? So in acidity, we took some general acid, which we're going to call HA, where A is the conjugate base, or, or the A minus is the conjugate base, right? And we did this in, in Chem 2. So we took some acid, and we said it goes into equilibrium with A minus and hydronium ion, right? Well, remember the equilibrium constant equation, right? And so we said, all right, and this go, does anybody remember why this goes out? Because it's a pure liquid or solid, right? It's a homogeneous, it's pure liquid or solid. So it doesn't, it, its activity is considered to be one and it, it slips out, it, it goes out of the equation, all right? So the Ka is the concentration of hydronium ion, right? Remember that pH, is defined as the minus log of the hydronium ion concentration. Remember that? Brackets, ugly brackets. Okay. So this pH is related to Ka, right? Because if I take that and take the negative log of it, right? So this is going to tell us a lot about, pH is going to tell us a lot about Ka and so on. Now, if I'm dealing with a, a strong acid, Right, and when we said strong, we means that this we mean this goes to completion. So this basically goes to zero, right? If that's zero, this is zero. And so what is Ka gonna be? It's gonna be really big. Can you see that? It's gonna be huge. So Ka is gonna be very, very big. All right. So the strong acids that we do that we talk about in organic chemistry, they're not actually gonna be infinity, right? This would be infinity if that was actually zero. This would be infinity. I should say approaches infinity. Hope there's no mathematicians in this conversation because it's not, it doesn't equal infinity, but it approaches infinity, right? So that's going to be really big for a strong acid. So for a weak acid, K is going to be really small, right? So what does that mean? Let's go, let's go further. So Ka values ranging from 10 to the minus 50 and 10 to the 10, that's what we're dealing with. They're hard to work with, right? Because those are huge numbers both uh, really small, super, super small, and super big. So we're going to be using the log function, the p function, just like we did with pH. All right. So if you take the negative log of Ka, then all of a sudden your ranges of 10 to the minus 50 to 10 to the 10 end up going from negative 10 to 50, because that's what negative log does. Prove this to yourself by taking the negative log of 10 to the minus 50. Right. Do that on your calculator right now and prove that to yourself. And this would do also the negative log of 10 to the 10. What does that give you? Okay. So consequently, that's what we're going to be using the p function because these numbers are much easier to deal with and easily precise enough. All right. 
So let's look at some actual PKAs or K, uh, yeah PKAs. Um, sidebar: When I was in organic chemistry, so I took it twice. I took it once in 1989, and I got a D minus, and uh, that was just because the professor was too nice to put an F on my paper. Um, I just was trying. I was just struggling along, trying to memorize lines and dots, and never really trying, you know, hard enough. I was always just thinking, "All right, this is really bad." So then I took it again in 1994. So five years later, I was a little bit older, and I'd had a, I'd had a job at that point, and so at this time I was really determined to understand it. So when my professor came to the front of the class in 1994 and said, "Memorize this table." I said, yeah, you know, I'm going to memorize that table. And I went and memorized it. My table, actually, I still have it in my office. My table actually had 21 of these guys in there, okay? 21 acids and their, their uh, consequent PKs, or their, not consequent, but their um, whatever, the, the, the matching PKs, all right? So in doing that, I set myself up with an understanding of, of, of compounds. So I, I'm going to recommend that you memorize this. Very few students take me up on it, but I'm going to prove to you over and over again how useful it is. If you have it in your head, then you begin to recognize things. You're not looking stuff up, right? So look at this. If we take, I think this is uh, sulfonic, no, that's sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid has a pKa of minus 9. So that means it's a super strong, right? Super strong acid, minus 9, right? Uh, this, I don't know the name of that, has a seven, not minus 7.3. HCl, I know that, right? That's got minus 7. Okay. Hydronium, minus 2. Acetic acid is 5. You see that? Uh, phenol is 9.9. .9. Water is 16. Ethanol is also 16, a little higher. And tert, tert butyl alcohol is 18, right? So we're going to do, actually, in the, I think in the next slide I've got an even bigger table. So this table is going to give us good uh, reference points for how strong these acids are. So let me, let me just go down this checklist here. The, there are more acids in table, yeah, on the inside of cover your textbook. That's the one I memorized. It's tw about 21 acids that I memorized. Each pKa unit represents an order of magnitude or a power of 10. So if so it turns out sulfuric acid, can you see it's minus 9 and HCl is minus 7? That means sulfuric acid is 100 times stronger of an acid than HCl, right? But that's so low that that's, we still call that strong, right? We still call that complete. All right. So let me go with this. Um, yeah, this is what I was just showing you. But here's a, I, I showed you. So if you're a gas, it's minus 9, right? HCl is minus 7. But look at this. Ammonia is really, we know that as a base, right? But if you were to strip off that proton right there, that's how weak of an acid it would be, right? It's a super weak acid, super, super weak. And it's got a pKa of 38. Ethylene is even weaker. And ethane is weaker yet, okay? So we're going to get down to, when you get to something like this, you simply say, well, that's, Really, all of these are so weak, you would call it, that's not even acid, right? Now, I do want to emphasize one more thing, and that is that the conjugate base of this acid, this is going to be the weakest conjugate base because it's the strongest acid, okay? And here's another conjugate base that should be Cl minus chloride, right? But this is actually, since this is a very weak acid, its conjugate base is pretty strong. We'll use this, I think we won't get to that until, until organic 2, but this is a base that we use for some things, super strong base. And this base is so strong we never see it. Ah, oh, that's not true. We see it in some organometallic stuff, but it's super rare. And this also, we see that in some organometallic stuff. But these bases are so strong that we just, we just never need them. This is what we might call, yeah, that, that's really like a flagship super strong base. All right. So... Now we're going to use pKa values to predict equilibria. This is interesting. This is what I'm going to do with all my, my acid-base problems. What I'm going to do when I'm given an equilibrium and I'm asked, which way does this go? Does it go left or right? This is the question right here. Does it go left or right? You can see we're being told it goes right. But here's the reason why. 
the, the lower the pKa, the stronger the acid. So what I'm going to do when I get these reactions, you'll see me doing it in class. Students are going to ask me a question. I'm going to go to the board. I'm going to write the whole reaction out because I'm very patient. Right? Then I'm going to look up the pKa's. And I'm going to write the pKa's of the acids out. Here's an acid and here's an acid because this is acting as a base, so this must be the conjugate acid. Right? I'm going to write out those pKa's. And then I'm going to say the lower one gets to act like an acid. Right? I think some of you are going to go, well, the arrow goes to the higher one. But I prefer to think about what's really happening. The lower acid, that's the stronger acid, the lower pKa, gets to act like an acid. And I'm going to draw the arrow that way. Right there, I'm going to do it all with my pencil. No doing this in my head. I don't ever do this in my head anymore. Okay, so you can see that the pKa is going to tell you very reliably which side is favored in equilibria. All right, now we're also going to use pKa's to analyze equilibria. So look, we do the same thing over here. We see, we write down the pKa's. We go, oh wow, that's definitely the stronger acid there. It's definitely going to go this direction, which we see here, right? So look at, if we see that the pKa values is that big, 34, it tells you that there's going to be 10 to the 34 more products than reactants. What? 10 to the 34 K is equal to 10 to the 34? What? In other words, this goes to completion. Okay? So we're going to use pKa's to anal analyze equilibria. We're going to use, P let me go back a slide, we're going to use pKa's to predict equilibria, and you're going to be surprised at how reliable this is and how useful. All right, so go back and memorize a table or two. If you want, I'll give you the list of 21 that I memorized, and I'll demonstrate to you how I used them to uh, make predictions.